What's up everyone, it's the Law School Lumberjack here for another installment of Property Law 101, Fee is Not Simple. Today we're going to do a case brief on the case of Ree Taylor. Now, this case deals with life estates and uh, absolute interest in fee simple. If you haven't watched my previous videos on life estates and fee simple interests, I highly recommend that you check them out there on my channel and they might give a good primer on certain topics such as life estates with encroachment on capital, as well as absolute fee simple interest. Now, I know a lot of students find this case quite difficult or difficult to understand. The court in this case goes through a lot of cases uh, to really interpret what type of gift Mr. Taylor gave. Uh, so hopefully I can make it a lot simpler. Uh, this will be a pretty short video because the ratio of the case and the actual interpretation uh, shouldn't take too long. So without further ado, let's get through the facts. So Mr. Taylor passes away and he gives his wife in his will all of his personal property to have and use throughout her lifetime. Any remaining property that is in her possession at the time of her death is then intended to be distributed among Mr. Taylor's daughters. So what happens here is the courts have to decide whether or not this is a life estate with the right to encroach on capital or an absolute gift, in other words, a transfer of fee simple interest to Mrs. Taylor. The reason why this is important and the reason why they're, the other parties are fighting about this is that if Miss Taylor was given a life estate with the right to encroach on capital, then the property that was given to Miss Taylor and is remaining at her death will, would be distributed to Mr. Taylor's daughters. However, if it was an absolute gift to Mrs. Taylor, then the property would be distributed through Mrs. Taylor's estate. So essentially, Mr. Taylor's daughters really want it to be a life estate with the right to encroach on capital, and the beneficiaries of Mrs. Taylor's will really want it to be an absolute gift or an absolute transfer of Mr. Taylor's fee simple interest. Now, that's not extremely important for the purposes of this case, but I just wanted to give some explanation as to why this dispute was going on. So what happens in this case is the court looks at the words of the gift or the words of the will to try to understand what the testator, who is Mr. Taylor, intended. In this circumstance, the court points specifically to the right to have and use throughout her lifetime. Spoiler alert, the court decides that this is a life estate with a right to encroach on capital. Now let's break that down to try and explain why the court comes to their decision. The first thing the court looks at is the words for her lifetime. The court looks at that and says, this must mean that Mr. Taylor was intending Mrs. Taylor to have a life estate in the property. They go through a bunch of old English cases and some Canadian cases, and really what, they come down, what it comes down to is the court looks and says, no, in her lifetime, made it very clear that this was intended to be a life estate. Next, the court looks at to have and use and interprets that, again, through some English and Canadian case law. They look at the wording and say, no, to have and use was clearly intended for Miss Taylor to have the right to use the property and to encroach on capital. So they put these two together and decide, yes, okay, this is clearly a life estate with a right to encroach on capital and was not an absolute transfer. So you might be wondering, how do I apply this on a law school exam? If you see a will which states something to the extent of the right to have and use for someone's lifetime or references for someone's lifetime, you can likely quote retailer and suggest that a life estate was intended to be given rather than an absolute gift in fee simple. I hope this video was helpful. Please feel free to like and subscribe if it was. Thank you very much and take care. See you next time.